Hey there, vinyl community. I think that we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're on. Hey, so today, um, thought I'd try to do a, a quick one <clears throat> on a band, um, kind of a collectible band for me. Um, an important band, not that I have a, a lot of records by them. Uh, you know, kind of in my estimation, I think you really only need uh, three. Uh, the three first, uh, the three first albums. Uh, before we um, get on to that, though, I should probably mention that listening to uh, this right now, this is uh, Brian Eno's Discreet Music. Great ambient record. Um, this is uh, the first album. No, this isn't the first album, is it? On Obscure? I don't think it is. It might be. No, it's Obscure number three. So, uh, yeah, great record. Um, used to see this around a fair amount, um, but lately I've seen it kind of moving up in prices. Uh, I noticed that these obscure uh, albums that came out originally have been getting, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, wanted. So, uh, great record, though. If you like anything by Brian, you know you're going to enjoy this great record. So, um, the band that I want to talk about, though, is uh, Funkadelic. And uh, Funkadelic, born from... Uh, so, when George Clinton uh, originally came up with the idea of uh, being in a band, what he did is uh, he had kind of a commercial band, and then they had kind of a, a more experimental band that they, they went with. The commercial disco oriented band that they originally had was uh, Parliament. And Parliament had some sizable club hits in the early 70s uh, with a more commercial, disco-ish um, club kind of a sound, a more traditional R&B funk sound than, than what would become, um, you know, Funkadelic. And with Funkadelic, Clinton and crew would... Um, um, it was part of the record deal that he cut was that he was going to be able to make these Funkadelic records in addition to keep making the more commercial Parliament records. And, um, and so he did. And they came out with the first Funkadelic record right here. Pretty tough to find these in, in any sort of good shape. And uh, I had to look long and hard for uh, a nice copy of uh, the first Funkadelic record. Uh, but eventually I was able to track one down. These, these albums are all on Westbound Records. Um, distributed through New York, but um, um, really part of the uh, Detroit scene. Funkadelic was really a big part of the Detroit scene at that time and was huge in this area. And you'd think that these albums being, uh, they sold pretty well, and you would think that they would be plentiful. But whenever you come by, a Funkadelic record, it's always beat up and bad. Um, I've seen sleeves, torn records that look like cat toys that are trying to sell, that are people trying to sell them. Um, I've seen G Plus records trying to sell for $150. You know, it's just gotten crazy. Um, this is a great record. This is probably their most traditional of the first three which I consider their, their most important releases. Not that they didn't do some great music afterwards. They did. Um, but uh, this has Mommy What's a Funkadelic, which is probably the song most people, Music for Your Mother, I Got a Thing, You Got a Thing, Everybody's Got a Thing. Um, at first sight, it's just uh, killer, killer stuff right there. And uh, yeah, if you want one of these, um, and they've done some reissues that are, I guess they're adequate. I, I still say the best reissue I heard of this record or any of the Funkadelic records was the CD, as far as like sound quality goes. And, and you also get some bonus tracks on those. So, you know, unless you're willing to fork out some silly money for originals of these, um, it might almost be best to just be happy with the, uh, the CD versions of them. So that's up to you. Um, but this is a great record, probably their most traditional of the first three, where even though they, they do kind of, um, you know, there, there are some studio eccentricities on here, and um, 
And you start to hear it in, in tracks like, um, well, right from the beginning of this album, um, Nami, What's a Funkadelic? You know, you hear it right away. Um, I got a thing, you got a thing, everyone's got a thing. You're starting to see that kind of untraditional elements of funk music that was uh, be a hallmark of Funkadelic. And they would take from, from uh, you know, experimental music and from rock and roll and from a lot of different sources, R&B and funk, of course, um, and really create something unique. Um, Clinton was prone to using the studio kind of like a, um, kind of like a, uh, another instrument. And so there's a lot of um, fooling around with the knobs and twiddling with the sound to create something um, kind of unique. And in the end, I think they created something really, really brilliant. So this is the first Funkadelic record, simply called Funkadelic. The next record um, that would come out, <clears throat> all the old rules would be kind of thrown off and they would create kind of what's considered today kind of their masterpiece. Um, and that's uh, Maggot Brain. And uh, we're all familiar with this cover. These aren't, um, people know these records pretty well. What's difficult is to find them in decent shape. I got real lucky with uh, Maggot Brain um, I walked into a record show, and they, every year they have this Ann Arbor record show in, in Michigan, and they um, and they and they uh, um, I, I walked in there one day. This is ten years ago or so, and, and I'm looking around, and there's a, a booth that the uh, that the um, a dealer has, and up in the corner of the booth, he's got Maggot Brain hanging on the wall, and. I glance at it, I look at it, and it looks like it says 150, which was a lot to pay for a record, you know, 10 years ago for me. Um, but I, I was curious enough because I had wanted one that, that I was willing to take a look at it. And so, and so I did, and he took it off the wall and hands it to me, and I pull it out. The sleeve looks really nice. I'll show you. Um, record on that Westwood label and uh, sleeve was all put together still and looking really beautiful and um, and so sorry it's a little bit loud um, and I, I took a look at it and then I took another look there was a little card that came with the it was up on the wall where the album was hanging and I noticed that it had kind of been bent and uh, around the corner of the frame. <clears throat> it didn't say 150. It said 50, which I was not prepared for. And I said, I looked at the dealer and I said, 50 bucks. And he goes, 50 bucks. And I whipped out my cash and I had myself a real nice copy of Maggot Ring. So I consider that getting pretty, pretty damn lucky. The, the, the vinyl looks you know, almost unplayed. And so, and, and I've heard some of the reissues on this record too. Um, I guess that, you know, I, I don't know what the story really is, that the, the tapes are lost or, or um, that they just can't get the, the sound right or whatever it is. None of them seem to, you know, match the sound that, that is on those original records. Even when they tried to do, a, a, there's a more recent reissue that a friend of mine bought and I heard some of it and uh, it sounds okay, you know, but it doesn't sound like the original, which everything is kind of, and what I mean by that is spatially, everything seems to kind of be in the right place. I'm no audiophile. And so if, it, if I'm hearing it differently, then I imagine, then I imagine other people would too. Um, on, on Maggot Brain, Funkadelic, really kind of, the, the reels come off the cart. And the band is willing to do some, some major experimenting. A lot of it was subject matter. You know, we all, we all know the, the long opening track, Mag, Maggot Brain. I won't comment too much on that, but they take on some pretty um, uh, interesting and controversial topics. Things like 
you and your folks, me and my folks, which is about a interracial uh, uh, love. Um, and imagine that that was still something to comment on when this album came out. And, and maybe for a lot of people still is. Um, but uh, hit it and quit it. Um, can you get to that? You know, I, a lot of this is commentary on the society that we live in. And Clinton and company were more than happy to be critical of, of the economic system, of the political system um, in the United States. And that was really, really important part of, of early Funkadelic. Um, and even later, the band never really got off of that and in some ways uh, kept you know, punching at that, allowing for the parliament part of it to, to keep the money flowing in and using Funkadelic as a kind of uh, a tool to comment on the larger society. And this, no, none of their albums do that more than, than Maggot Brain. And uh, it's an amazing journey. Uh, sonically, um, the band was experimenting with uh, studio effects and, and trying things that just a funk band um, traditionally wasn't known to do. And um, if they did it on this record, the record that came after this, Free Your Mind, and your ass will follow. Um, on that record, they did it even more, especially sonically. And uh, I almost consider that record, and, and, and to me personally, that is the record that's really kind of their masterpiece. And unfortunately, I have looked for years for a decent copy of, of Free Your Mind, and um, I've never come across one that I'm willing to pay for. Because usually when I see them, they're, if they're VGs, you know, minuses, um, people want silly money for them. And um, so you just got to keep your feelers out there and hope that a good one kind of comes by. But the Free Your Mind has been elusive and probably my number one want, my number one grail that I would love to find is a nice, clean, you know, VG++ copy of... Uh, of uh, Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. It's an album that deserves to be listened to, I think, um, that way. And uh, on Free Your Mind, the band really jumps off the deep end. And to me, it almost sounds like a, a wild mix of all these amazing influences where Clinton was really starting to go, you know, become really adventurous in his exploration. And there are aspects of it that almost sound like, um, um, you know, I use this kind of liberally, but like almost like a Krautrock kind of uh, willingness to experiment with sound and with uh, the structure of the tracks. And you can really feel um, everything just, a, you know, about to be coming unglued as some of the tracks are, are playing, and but they don't, they hang together. And um, um, it's, a, it's a, a sonic adventure and, and a, real, a real masterpiece. And uh, yeah, if you haven't heard it, if you haven't heard any of these three, uh, first three uh, Funkadelic records, um, I, I suggest you do. The band, the band went on to record, uh, I think their fourth album was uh, America Eats Its Young, uh, another great title. And, um, and each of their titles would have, you know, those kind of commentaries um, in them. And eventually, Warner Brothers would pick up their contract and they would do, um, do the album. I only have the single. Um, I'm not sure it's an album I really feel like I need to own. I kind of like the single. One Nation Under a Groove. Um, you broke it up into two parts on the single. And uh, yeah, it's a funky little single. Um, you know, by the time they get on Warner Brothers, um, I think a lot of that experimentalism that I like so much on those first three records is gone. And uh, the band is clearly trying to, you know, be that funk, you know, one of their songs is something to the effect of, uh, why can't a funk band play rock music? And they're trying for this more um, mainstream sound. Um, and I'm sure that that's a result of being on a big, 
a big label like Warner Brothers, who was expecting a certain amount of sales. I think they did four albums on Warner Brothers before eventually, you know, that was over. And then over the years, uh, various components of, of Funkadelic and Parliament have come together and, and tried different things. But um, a fabulous group, if you're not familiar with Funkadelic and you just think of them as maybe just this kind of basic, you know, funk band, get yourself a copy of, uh, of any of those first three, but Maggot Brain or, or particularly uh, Free Your Mind, and, uh, and you'll hear some funk that you've never heard before. So, hope everyone's doing all right and having a good night. And uh, weekend's coming up, so um, thanks a lot for watching.